Hello everybody and welcome back. So this is a familiar problem. We just worked on this exercise uh, in the context of a test on two population variances. Well, as we saw when we get down to the bottom here, there's a second part to this test where our colleague suggests that although the new method may succeed at reducing the variance in completion times, which is the conclusion that we came to in the first problem, they believe that this comes at a cost to students' performance. So in the previous video, I'll just scribble it in here. Remember we had performed this test to determine whether or not the variance of the old or the original is it greater than the variance of the new? And we had formulated it this way because we wanted to see if they had succeeded at reducing the variance. So the variance of the new is less than the old. That's the same as saying as the old greater than the new. And we formulated it like this because of the restriction of using the F tables when we're doing these problems by hand. Well, now we're moving into a different type of a test. Does it come at a cost to student performance? Well, when I come back to the problem, there's a lot of information in here. Remember when we went through this in the last video, I can see I've got some sample sizes here. I've got an average completion time. I've got a standard deviation completion time. I've got average grade, standard deviation of the grade, another average, standard deviation, average, standard deviation. There's a lot of information here. What is it that we need? What is relevant to our problem? Here, if I want to develop a test to see whether or not this has come at a cost to students' performance, given the information that I have available to me, the only way that I can possibly test uh, student performance is to look at average grades. So here I've got an average grade with a standard deviation and here I have another average grade with another standard deviation. So that's the information that I'm going to use and here if I'm comparing two averages well then this is going to be a t-test. So let's put our test together. So we have our null and our alternative here, I'm going to set this up. I'm going to use the same definitions, just as I've done before. Now, this there's a little bit of um, a choice here. I might want to formulate my test the way that sounds right, given the, state, the, the way the problem is stated. But I also might want to formulate my test in a way that my definitions don't change. So if I just look at the problem, and I see, does it come at a cost to students' performance? To me, that sounds like a lower tail test. Is the average grade of those students using the new method, is it less than the average grade of those using the old method? That sounds like a lower tail test in my mind. But I'm going to de develop this in a way that maintains the same definitions as what we've already used in that previous exercise. So we've already defined population one as the old and population two as the new. So maintaining those same definitions, again, I want to see did this come at a cost? Is the average grade of those who use the new method, is it less than the grade of those who use the original, which is the same as saying is the grade of those who use the original greater than the average grade of those who use the new. So because of how I'm choosing to define my terms, and I'm choosing those terms so that I'm consistent with the previous test on the same data, based on those definitions, this becomes an upper tail test. So I developed this test so that if the evidence supports the null hypotheses, then we can refute uh, this colleague's claim. Our average grade is at least equal to, if not greater than, the average of those who use the old method. If the evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, now I have evidence to show that my colleague was in fact correct. I have evidence to show that they were correct, that the average grade has in fact declined. Okay, so now our next step here is 
calculate our test statistic. So this is a test on two population variants. This is going to be a t-test. So here's that test statistic. Now, for module 10, we might remember that there's different ways of doing a t-test depending on what information we have about the population standard deviation. If we assume that the variances are equal or do we assume that they're not equal? That determined how we calculate the standard error and it determined how we calculate the degrees of freedom. Now here we have actually just performed a test on variance that supported the alternative. So we just performed this test on the variance that, that stated that one variance is in fact greater than the other. Therefore, they're not equal. Therefore, this is going to be the appropriate standard error that we will use. Uh, keep my notation here consistent. N O and S N N N. And of course, our degrees of freedom calculation, well, that's going to be that big, ugly calculation that I'm going to use the benefits of technology to kind of skip through that calculation. It's somewhat tedious and time consuming, as maybe you recall from module 10 um, to look at. So, here I'm going to put in my sample means. Let me just scroll back up to my data here. So I have the average for those who use the new method, or the original old method. Let's see, it was 72.3 minus those who use the new method, their grade was 67.2 our hypothesized difference here is just zero, divided by our standard deviations. So here that one is going to be 13, 13 squared over that sample size of those who wrote the old. Let's come back up here. 30 students use the old method and 35 used the new method. And my standard deviation for those groups so was 14. This can be a really tricky type of a problem when you've got so many numbers in there, it can be very difficult to keep track of things. So it's important to Take your time and be careful, and hopefully I haven't made any mistakes here myself. Okay, so I'm going to come down here, and my test statistic for this problem is going to be 1.522. Now we need our degrees of freedom, and our degrees of freedom calculation, again, because we're assuming unequal variance, well, in fact, we're not assuming it, we have evidence to show unequal variance, you're going to need to use that big ugly formula, that big ugly calculation to find the degrees of freedom. You should find that to be equal to 63. So I have my test statistic, I have my degrees of freedom. Now we're going to use the p-value approach to draw our conclusion. So I have a t-distribution with 63 degrees of freedom. So if I come down here, and again, we're going to have to approximate. We often do when we're using these tables. So I'm going to round that to 60 degrees of freedom. My test statistic was 1.52. And so I'm just here between these values. So I'm going to follow those up. all the way to the top. And there I have my relevant probabilities. These are those upper tail probabilities. So the relevant probabilities between 0.05 and 0.1. So my p-value for this test, this is an upper tail test, less than 0.1 greater than 0.05. 
here once more, if we're performing this test at the 05 level of significance, we have insufficient evidence here to reject the null hypotheses. In other words, we do not have evidence to show what my colleague has stated they're concerned about or that they've suggested. Our evidence, we do not have any evidence to show that in fact the average grade has declined. Certainly I can see in my sample values, the sample averages appears to be a decline from 72 to 67. It is a smaller sample um, average, but we have insufficient evidence to show that that difference is statistically significant. So here I can refute my colleague's concern. I can say, no, we don't have any reason to believe that that's the case. As we found in our first test, we had evidence to show that we succeeded at reducing the variance in completion time. And we can show here that that did not come at a cost to students' performance. Okay, so that's it. We've got the F-test done, and we've got that complementary T-test. I say complementary, again, because it's giving us a, a, another piece of the puzzle, a different perspective, another, um, another piece of analysis on this same data. So we understand something about the difference in the variances, and so their shape, and we understand something about their relative location. Okay? Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.